So our next speaker is Dr. Ricardo Maggi, and he is a research professor in internal medicine at the College of Veterinary Medicine at North Carolina State University. I know in particular that Dr. Maggi is um, very well-versed at molecular detection techniques um, with multiple species. He's been doing it for a long time. And uh, today he's going to talk about um, some really interesting work that he's done in developing uh, simultaneous detection and absolute quantification of Babesia, Bartonella, and Borrelia by droplet digital PCR. Thank you, Monica. Uh, good afternoon to all. And I'm going to try to share with you um, a couple of things that we were doing lately at the College of Veterinary Medicine and NC State. Um, as Monica mentioned, uh, I'm going to present about the development of a droplet digital PCR for the detection of Bartonella, Borrelia, and Mavicia. Uh, I must say that beyond my involvement with NC State, I'm also a co-founder and CTO of Galaxy Diagnostics, just a full disclosure in regard of my other involvement beyond the university. And, uh, I'm going to go briefly to describe what digital droplet PCR is. Um, we all know, and I'm going to talk about the conventional normal PCR. Normal PCR in my book now is qPCR, where you use probes in order to detect the presence uh, of Bartonella uh, DNA, whatever the target. So in a normal PCR, you have in a single tube, in a single sample, a mix of target DNA, hopefully, uh, DNTP, the building block of whatever DNA you are going to be creating through the amplification process, uh, non-target DNA like host DNA if you are uh, testing some clinical samples, probes obviously in order to uh, be able to see those amplification processes, enzyme and any other thing that could be co-eluded with the uh, DNA extraction during that process. Uh, in a, in a normal PCR, what you have basically is all this mixture all together in, in a bulk fashion, and the process of amplification goes on uh, cycle by cycle, and hopefully you are going to have targets that are going to be detected uh, through a probe reading, a channel in a specific wavelength that is associated with the Bartonella DNA you are looking for. A digital PCR works back basically in a very similar way, but before the PCR take place, the same mixture is emulsified in tens of thousands of droplets. Statistically speaking, each droplet is going to act independently as a independent, very one nanoliter drop. And that drop is going to be like a single PCR where you have, again, a single DNA targets, uh, the NTP, the primer, the probe, uh, enzyme, and whatever else. Uh, is going to be, again, co-eluded during the DNA uh, purification process. The advantage is that when you do the PCR on those emulsified uh, tens of thousand drops, uh, you are going to have discrete units that are going to be amplified or not, depending if the small pieces of DNA of your target is in one drop or several of them. Basically, what you accomplish doing that partitioning uh, part is basically you are going to avoid the and many things that could inhibit a little bit, a little bit the uh, sensitivity of the traditional real-time qPCR, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is normally associated with contaminants, uh, with high concentration of DNA, or primer sequestrant. If the, there is not too much DNA in the sample, actually the, the, the Poisson distribution uh, regarding these drops uh, in regard to the DNA contents, you're going to have basically one single piece of DNA per drop. So basically you can do uh, after the amplification and after having a signal, uh, an absolute quantification of the number of copies of your target that you can have in that sample. Seeing other do, oh, sorry guys. Uh, after the amplification, again, we have uh, tens of thousands of drops. And in that tens of thousands of drops, uh, there are going to be signals that are going to be related with the probe you are, use, you are using to detect uh, whatever target DNA being one single species or different species. Uh, an example here is uh, uh, four channels. And since we have uh, drops that are going to be independent one or the other one, 
the detection method is exactly the same like a flow cytometer. Uh, you have a line of drops uh, pulling from that particular sample, and you can read if you have four channels, as in the examples that I'm going to show you later, you are going to be able to read if every single drop is positive or not for that signal of that channel, meaning an ampli a positive amplification for that target. Uh, the results in regard of that is going to be basically a distribution of dots that are going to be dependent on the channel target. Uh, being positive or negative, basically showing fluorescent or not. Uh, the example, what you're going to see every, uh, I cannot do a four dimension kind of thing. So I'm going to talk about now a uh, combination of channel one and channel two, meaning uh, target one and target two. And for example, drops that are going to be completely uh, zero in regard of fluorescent, meaning there is no amplification of any kind. Uh, drops that are going to have in channel one, in this case, in the vertical axis, uh, that are going to show fluorescent, meaning that every drop that is showing here in blue are going to be positive for that target amplicon. Uh, same thing with the channel number two or target number two, where you're going to have some drops that are going to be positive for that particular amplification process, that particular probe. And finally, you are going to have uh, eventually some drops, depending on the concentration of one or the other one, that are going to share or have both targets uh, in it. So you're going to have in that particular drop on that upper right quadrant, you're going to have both fluorescent signals, basically telling you that you have two, the two targets you are looking in channel one and channel two. So basically this is uh, the typical um, result of a run using the QX1 from BioRat, where we use four different channels, meaning four different targets. Uh, target one, target two, target three, target four. Amplification in this quadrant for target one, if it's positive. Amplification positive for these two quadrants, if it's positive for channel two. And the same thing for the channel three, channel four. In the upper quadrants for channel three, and in the right side uh, quadrants if they are positive for channel four. So basically what we try to do with the, what we call the BBV digit, droplet digital PCR is trying to look for Bartonella borrelian pyroplasma uh, as a replacement of Babesia and including a housekeeping gene in order to assess if the quality of the PCR or the DNA actually is good enough for DNA amplification. So basically channel one, channel two is, uh, was uh, designed for Bartonella uh, and Borrelia respectively, uh, channel three for pyroplasma and the housekeeping for channel four. Uh, two different genes depending if we are targeting humans or animals. Um, what are the matrices that we use for this assay validation? Well, uh, for Borrelia and Bartonella, since they are facultative intracellular, we were lucky or we are lucky in order to have either isolates or pure DNA uh, of several species of each genus. Uh, in order to do spike samples, uh, either in blood, tissues, or do a in vitro infection in cell lines or tissue or animal models. We also have matrices that include tissue from animal models, pre-characterized samples uh, from clinical cases, and a vector that showed to be positive, at least as a carriership for one or both of them. In the Babesia side, um, they are obligated intracellular, so we don't have a true leader isolate uh, to play with or pure DNA. So we have infected cells uh, from experimental cell lines infection, blood from animal models, and uh, pre-characterized uh, clinical cases, mostly all of them basically from uh, wildlife and companion animal. Also, we have tissues from a vector that are shown to be positive for Babesia. So those kind of matrices were the one we were using in order to uh, put to the test the uh, assay that we were developing using the droplet digital PCR. It's not for you to read, obviously, uh, but in the first uh, uh, section here, you have all the Babesia species uh, that we were testing, all, the, all of them were basically the found in blood uh, with all the species from rhinos, dog, horses, uh, rabbit, hamster, cats, and so on. Uh, all of them, except for a couple of experimental animals, 
were all naturally infected. In the size of Bartonella, we, again, we are lucky to have several different species that we can actually uh, do either uh, experimental infection in cell lines or um, in blood, uh, as well as naturally infected animals, uh, again, being uh, cattle, rabbit, dog, cats, uh, or even humans. In the Borrelia side, uh, we were a little bit more limited in regard of the type of uh, either host or cell that we could play with this uh, uh, genus. So mostly we have spike samples or naturally infected vectors uh, in order to put these uh, uh, DNAs uh, to test through the uh, Babesia, Borrelia, and Bartonella or BBB droplet digital PCR. Um, last year, we, we published the, the validation for in, in this type of uh, methodology uh, for Bartonella. Um, I'm not going to go in detail, but we were able to detect 25 different species at a very, very low uh, concentration, which was good. Uh, and the matrices we were using were experimental cell lines, tissue from animals, and clinical human animal cases, as well as vector. Just to give you a flavor in regard of how they look, remember, I'm going to show you channel one, channel two, uh, channel one, the vertical axis is Bartonella, the horizontal one is Borrelia. And as you can see, uh, just an example, uh, it, this one is uh, the result for positive drug for uh, Bartonella trivocodon in a uh, rat from LA. Uh, this one is Tamiai from a good rat. Uh, you can see all of them are in the upper left quadrant that is no Borrelia. Remember, Borrelia is everything that is showing in this side here. Uh, a uh, cat uh, with um, positive for Bartonella hensley and uh, Vincent Alberico 5 from a naturally infected dog. What happened with the uh, Borrelia? Well, um, as I told you, we have basically 13 different species, most of them 11 that we were having uh, isolate that we can actually use for, uh, for example, experimentally infect uh, cell lines even from animals or humans, or uh, to do spike samples even in dog or human uh, blood in order to test how sensitive or not our detection method using the droplet digital PCR is. Uh, we also um, were testing a validation panel that has been used in Europe to validate Borrelia diagnosis uh, in five different laboratories. And those are the species uh, the strengths of each species that has been tested and the range of uh, copies per microliter, if you want, uh, of each one. And the interesting thing that we did it completely blindly, so we didn't know exactly uh, what we were testing. Uh, and when we analyzed that, were the results in regard to that, uh, it was amazingly, uh, I, I should not say on the dot, but very, very, very close to what we will be wishing for. What are the typical uh, results when you have only uh, Borrelia presence? Well, this is uh, Borrelia burdeferi. Uh, these are spike blood, uh, human blood. Uh, Borrelia burdeferi, as you see, no Bartonella, obviously we spike with uh, Borrelia. So the green dots only, uh, Aceli, MC, Lusitani, uh, Coriacea, uh, Turicatae, and Garini, and this is a, Perfect example of the same blood that we use to spike the other ones where you see nothing in regard of the green dots that represent in channel two, the amplification of Borrelia. Um, in regard of uh, cell lines and tissue samples, um, these are uh, skin uh, from a mice uh, that has been experimentally infected with Borrelia burdeferi, burdeferi B31. And as you can see, nothing in the Bartonella side, only green dots here, uh, obviously nothing here either. Um, Borrelia burdeferi, the same strains when we did experimental cell line infection. This one basically were uh, DH82, a uh, uh, dog histiocytic uh, cell line. And two tissues uh, or tissues from two different uh, ticks, uh, that one with Borrelia burdeferi, uh, exoscapularis, and a finish uh, that was positive previously in, in previous work that we did screening uh, different ticks from North Carolina with a uh, positive for Borrelia bcti. 
what happened with uh, Babesia? Uh, and I'm going to use the term Babesia or pyroplasma a little bit free in regard of exchange one with the other one, uh, given the differences. Um, we, we didn't have the luxury of having, a, a, again, obviously an isolate to uh, be able to do uh, experimental infection either in tissue or animals. So basically what we did was we put our hands on uh, a bunch of different animals that were naturally infected with Babesia. The list of the species again is here. They were all naturally infected except for uh, rabbit uh, and two hamsters that were for divergence, Duncani and Microdi. Um, but all of the other ones that I'm going to show you now were experimentally, yeah, sorry, naturally infected animals. And I'm going to show you a popular of some of them. Um, as you see, and the first uh, top, and this one, dogs, uh, one with Gibson eye, Babisia Coco, Conrad, and Bojelai, and with Canis Canis, uh, Cephalis positive cat. Uh, the, the only experimentally infected animals were the hamster with either Microdi or Duncania, and the uh, rabbit with divergence. Uh, other examples, cats uh, with uh, Babisia legano, uh, rhinoceros with bicornis, odonkoelin deers and elks, uh, and Babesia bulpes in gray foxes. Interestingly enough, we already identified several pretty non-characterized uh, Babesia species in wood rat, raccoons, uh, and other animals, uh, and skunks. And they were able to be also detected through the digital droplet PCR. What happened with coil infections? Well, uh, we, we play with different combination of the three uh, group of pathogens in Bartonella and Borrelia. We spiked blood samples and we were uh, testing infected vectors that we knew, again, by previous work, that were positive for both Bartonella Hensilia and Borrelia uh, burdoferi, for example. Uh, in regard to the Bartonella and Babesia, well, we spiked uh, blood samples with uh, Bartonella in, uh, for example, naturally infected uh, Babesia gibsoni dog, or uh, we uh, detected Bartonella and Babesia in a natural uh, infected gray foxes that we were um, collaborated with uh, people from Portugal and they were in a wildlife kind of screen. In regard to the combination of the three guys, or the three Bs, uh, well, uh, the only thing we could do was trying to spike uh, Borrelia and Bartonella, for example, in a naturally infected Babesia dog, or spike Bartonella, Borrelia, and Babesia microti in naive human blood. And I'm going to show a couple of examples. Um, this is uh, Bartonella hensile and Borrelia burdoferi. Uh, I'm showing, again, vertical axis uh, for detection of Bartonella and Borrelia only. And you can see those for the Borrelia, those for the Bartonella. Similar to this part when we use Quintana instead of Vigensele as a coin simulated co-infection. But then uh, Quintana here and a few dots here and the Borrelia positive dot here. Same thing with uh, when we co-spy uh, Bartonella cholera and Borrelia burdoferi, the Bartonella positive dots, the Borrelia positive dots, and the same thing with Vercofi and um, burdoferi. Uh, positive for the Bartonella side and the positive for the Borrelia. Uh, regarding the Bartonella and Babesia, again, um, this is a perfect example of few positive foxes from uh, Portugal that were literally co-infected with uh, Bartonella vincona and Babesia bulbes. And uh, again, I just see positive dose in the, this is Bartonella in the axis here, Borrelia, Pyroplasma, Babesia, and the housekeeping uh, in my channel four. Uh, Bartonella Vincent I detected here, no, nothing regarding the Borrelia detection, but a bunch of positive dots uh, because of the amplification of um, Babesia bulbase DNA. Uh, when we combine the three in naive uh, human blood, for example, uh, again, this is a combination of both uh, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, or Bartonella, Borrelia, Pyroplasma and uh, the housekeeping. You can see the Bartonellas uh, amplicons here. You can see the Borrelia, some uh, drops that are uh, co amplified with both. 
and the microdi, this was, was spied with Babicia microdi, and the housekeeping regarding the uh, control gene we use for this. So trying to summarize a little bit, those are all the species that we were put under the uh, droplet digital PCR uh, and this assay, um, not just non-species, but also some uncharacterized species. Oh, this is the list of the different host species that we were testing blood from, and the matrices that we were testing, experimental cell lines and tissues, tissue from animal models, clinical human and animal cases and vectors. Similarly, 13 species of uh, um, Borrelia, uh, with some of them with different um, strains. We use again, either human, dog, mice, or ticks as uh, our host species and the similar matrices than Bortonella in regard of what type of samples we were testing. The interesting is that this assay is not able only to amplify the Lyme disease group, but also the relapsing fever and the new design as a reptile group like, like in Borrelia uh, turcica. Uh, in the Babicia, this species, some uncharacterized, and we were able to detect a uh, Thylaria cervi, equi and uh, syphilis in cats. Uh, so uh, that's why we call it the pyroplasma instead of Babicia because Thylaria and Cyto were able uh, in, to, be, to be detected. Those are the list of different species that we went through the system in order to be tested. And again, we don't have isolate from Babicia any species, uh, but we have blood from animal models and clinical cases uh, that has been tested. In summary, we were able to take 32 botanical species, seven uncharacterized at a level of 0.5 to 5 genome copies per microliter. That is dependent on the strain, the species, and the matrix that we were using. Uh, we were able to take 13 Borrelia species of the three complexes, if you want, the land, relapsing fever, and reptile. Uh, and the range was between one and 10 genome copies per microliter. There were no cross reactivity with very close pyrocates. And this has been tested with literally 10,000 copies of these pyrocates uh, in a per sample. And there were absolutely not a single drop uh, being positive uh, with this close, but not Borrelia. Uh, in regard to the pyroplasmas, 27 pyroplasma species, 24 Babesia, including eight not uncharacterized, and co-infection of Bartonella of Borrelia, Bartonella and Babesia, and Bartonella and Cyto. Uh, what is next? Uh, this is very interesting in regard, especially in the Borrelia and in the Babesia backslash pyroplasma. Uh, but most of them were related to animal clinical samples or animal models. We are right now focusing on this cost uh, effectivity of this co infection uh, in the human side of things. Uh, this is the list of few references uh, that you can. Actually, if you're interested in exploring a little bit more, uh, you're very welcome. And I want to thank uh, Stephen Alexand Alexander Cohen Foundation uh, because uh, we received a grant from them that enabled us to buy this QX1 digital uh, droplet digital PCR without which we will not able to be able, we will never be able to do anything. And many collaborators, uh, including the guys from the Vector and Bond Disease Diagnostic Lab for all the pyroplasma positive clinical samples, uh, Dr. Fingerle uh, for the validation samples that we test blindly for the 11 Borrelia species, uh, Sam Telford for the Babesia microti, Duncanai and divergent um, infected uh, animal models, uh, Luis Cardoso, uh, the guy who we normally play with in Portugal, um, assessing vector and bone diseases in, in wildlife, and Dr. Jen Miller from Galaxy Diagnostic, who provide the uh, DHAD2 infection, infected cell lines. Seeing further ado, thank you guys, and I'm open to, I'm trying, I'm going to try to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maggi. That was very interesting. The sensitivity of this assay is so important for detecting these pathogens directly. 